So, I just recently rewatched the first X Men movie from 2000, directed by Brian Singer, and I gotta say, it was pretty good. I actually quite enjoyed it. I really liked the tone of this movie. You don't get movies, or at least you don't get superhero movies like this anymore. Tone just feels like different. It just feels like it's from another era, but not in a bad way. It feels more grounded, even though it, it is goofy as hell, and I will get into the goofiness. But I don't really think it hinders the movie, because it's at the end of the day, it's really entertaining to watch. I think Hugh Jackman as Wolverine is basically perfect. Uh, I liked Rogue in this, but I feel like they uh, kind of... Uh, they don't give her much to do. But I feel like they made her the damsel in distress by the uh, second half, kind of a plot device. Uh, basically what it is that Magneto is using her to put her in his machine that will kind of... It makes... I mean, uh, listen, it makes no sense. But it's the early 2000s, so I'll be a kind. And listen, my, my thing with movies is as long as you're entertaining, I will give you a pass. Like, I am pretty soft on movies. I'm not one of those critics that, like, in, I'm nitpicking everything. I just need to have a good time, and I'm good. And I feel like this movie does that for me. Probably one of the best scenes out of any superhero movies ever is the opening of this movie, Magneto's origin story. It's just so beautifully told, so perfect. It tells you everything you need to know about this character without having a single word of dialogue. And I feel like that is just peak filmmaking right there. I'd also like to give props to Magneto. I think Ian McKellen is perfect in the role and his interpretation of Magneto works for this era of X-Men movies. His plan is pretty stupid, but I see where he comes from. The end goal is stupid, but his motives make sense. And I think it works well in the script. My thing with the X-Men movies, and I've been saying this, is that I don't give a shit about the X-Men. But for me, what makes these movies interesting is the dynamic at play between Professor X and Magneto. What makes these movies interesting to me is that Professor X and Magneto want ultimately the same thing. They want what's best for mutants, but they have two different ideologies and the core conflict of these movies always goes back to that difference of ideology and I think that's what makes the X-Men special. Give up on the married. What would you have me do, Charles? I've heard these arguments before. It was a long time ago. Mankind has evolved since then. Yes, into us. I'm sneaking around in you, Charles. Whatever are you looking for? I'm looking for hope. I will bring you hope, old friend. And I ask only one thing in return. Don't get in my way. We are the future, Charles, not them. They no longer matter. I think it's very reminiscent to the civil rights movement in a way. Professor Rex is kind of like Martin Luther King. He's all about achieving his goals through peace and protest. And Magneto is kind of like Malcolm X, where he's like, you know, f white people in this case. F the non-mutants, they will never like us. We don't need their ass. Let's just take over because we're the superior race. And it's just really cool. And I feel like they did a good job of diving into that conflict in the first X-Men movie. Okay, now of course I'm generalizing Malcolm X's politics and like I'm, not, I'm sure he didn't believe that. I'm just exaggerating for views and clout. So just letting you guys know, I don't actually think Malcolm X fought like that, but he was more hardcore about civil rights in terms of his actions than Martin Luther King is what I know. Anyways, so there's these two. There's Wolverine, we talked about how great Hugh Jackman is, I mean, this movie 
you know, it proved all the naysayers wrong back in the day. Like, I wasn't around back in the day like that, but I just read up on what people were talking shit about Hugh Jackman, and he proved them wrong. He has a good story arc, just kind of finding his way, finding who he is, and I think it's done really well. There's not really much I have to add to that. What I'll say is, in terms of the negatives for this movie, uh, the rest of the X-Men, in terms of Cyclops, Jean, and Storm, I'm not going to say they're useless, but they're kind of useless. I mean, I might be a little biased, but I don't think it's just bias. I, ju I don't like Cyclops, and I don't like Jean Grey. I think they are both very lame characters and I've never seen the appeal of either of them. And this job doesn't even do a good job of making you like them. Cyclops just lacks the depth that this movie gives to Wolverine, and even to Rogue, to be honest. Like, this Cyclops is just a two-dimensional, uh, just, a, just a typical jock, uh, hey, like, this is my girl and my motorcycle. He has nothing to him, and he just kind of, uh, like, and, I, and I understand the criticism of people are like, that's how he is in the comics. I understand that's how he is in the comics, but make him better in the movie. Uh, there's a lot of characters that are really lame in the comics that the movies have added more character to them to make them more interesting to watch for a two hour period. I understand Cyclops is not the main character, but there's a lot of movies where the side characters are more interesting than they should be. For example, in the first Avengers movie, they made Black Widow one of the most interesting characters in that whole movie. And she's like the fifth main character. They made Agent Coulson have an arc, and he's a nobody. So I don't buy this excuse of like, he's a shitty character in the comics, so that's why it's okay for him to be shit in the movies. Uh, same with Jean Grey. Jean Grey's just annoying. Like, what does she want? Like, what do you want, Jean? Uh, like, like, you're cheating on your man, sort of. I mean, that's more in the later movies, but like, you can't control your powers, but you're like, mad, and like, you're just kinda lame, and I just don't like Jean. Storm's got some of the goofiest moments in this movie. <laughs> that moment when she just bursts into the door and is like... Senator Kelly is dead. And it's like, she's just switching back and forth between an like, African or British accent to like, an American one, and like, she just has the funniest lines like... Do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? same thing that happens to everything else and some bullshit but yeah that's uh, pretty much it for my review in conclusion i think for its time this is one of the better in the 2000s this was this is a big step up this is way better than all the old batman movies in my opinion i don't care if that's a hot take this is uh i need to rewatch the old superman movies so I, I don't know but this is a good movie and it gives a lot of character depth and uh, i feel like it could have been it, it could have been something, it's something special, but it could have been something crazy. I kind of just did what the first Avengers did. Just kind of give more, a little bit, you don't have to focus, you don't have to focus like, like 50 minutes on the side characters, but kind of just take your core X-Men, take like four of them, and just kind of give them personality, you know what I mean? You don't have to, we don't have to go through the backstory, we don't have to see... Uh, Scott's whole uh, childhood or Jean's childhood uh, just Every time they open their mouth just make it interesting to watch is what I'm trying to say Otherwise this movie is a good really good movie even though it's 20 years old it's Still really fun to watch. I would give this movie probably a 7 out of 10 and How I would rank X-Men in the Fox Marvel movie series I would say it's better than X-Men Origins Wolverine, but not as good as X-Men 2. And there you have it folks, stay tuned next time for my review of Thor Love and Thunder.